Welcome to Agile to Agility Podcast with Milan Bayic. Major show alert. The very first value we wrote is individuals and interactions. Let's take this to another level. When they have that heat perspective and that, oh my God, I'm over my head, we're there to expose them to something new, a new way of thinking about something and meet them in their own perspective taking. And if we can change, you know, turn a light bulb on slowly um, through those conversations, we've done some good work. So uh, who is Michelle Mador and uh, why do you do what you do? And, you know, maybe tell us your story, how you get. Okay, all today. right, who is she? Hmm. She is someone, um, she is someone who's been through a whole lot of life experiences. Um, uh, and she is where she is today and exactly where she's supposed to be based on those life experiences and, you know, her journey through them. Uh -huh. um, why do I do what I do? Um, I do what I do because um, I love, I love the human interaction. I love the humanity in what we do. Um, I learned a long time ago when I was, you know, involved long before Agile. Agile is just a thing that came into my life. It made sense when it did, it resonated with me. And it isn't what any of this is about really, honestly, it could be called anything. And, and sometimes I wish it was called something else. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, in my life and my journey, um, and as I worked in the corporate, you know, world and did the whole climbing the corporate ladder um, thing, um, I was involved in a lot of, you know, back in the day, a lot of acquisitions and mergers and, you know, different cultures getting together. And honestly, I've felt the challenges and sometimes kind of painful experiences of, of that. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had, I had staff, I had people I had to hire and all that good stuff. And I realized very early on, it wasn't about your technical experience. It wasn't about how much you knew necessarily. While that was important, the differentiating factor for me became uh, in recognizing the ability for people to, to communicate, to experience the humanness that we have to experience in all of these organizational challenges. Mm -hmm. And so um, I got involved and interested in coaching back then. Not mm -hmm. long before Agile, um, I realized that I needed to become more of a coach as a leader and work with people in developing them. And so I became interested in development of people Oh, back in the early 2000s. Oh. Really and what inspired? Was there a specific event? You said there were a lot of events that kind of led to this. Was there anything specific that you can reflect on? Or is it just more like combination of things? Well, I can remember being in one of those acquisitions and feeling the in over my own head. It's, you know, <laughs> like, oh my gosh, I've got to start up a brand new division because we just acquired a company. We don't even know what we're doing. We've got smaller clients than what this new company we acquired had. And how are we going to meet all these challenges? You know, how, mm -hmm. you know, I was responsible for client retention and, you know, they have this big audacious goal of, you know, 98% client retention. <laughs> And immediately, you know, we were, we were making some, some of our clients, new clients, not happy uh, by taking their service out and all that good stuff that goes along with it. And, um, you know, I was hiring people and I was having a hard time. The, the, the culture where I worked was like a revolving door. You were, you know, as good as your last sale or, yeah. you know, you, you were just replaceable. Basically, that was the culture. And I recognized then the need for a shift in, in cultural, you know, experiences and the way we, our belief systems. And I recognize the need for working with people's thinking and their mindset mm -hmm. shift. And I knew that I couldn't tell them enough. I tried. I couldn't yeah. teach them enough. <laughs> I couldn't say it more times. 
and they would get it, that, that it was beyond that. And that only can come from, you know, more of a, a coaching perspective, more of a being curious with people, meeting people where they are. So um, that's really, I would say, one of the early, one of the early events that sparked that when I felt like I wasn't up to the challenge that was given to me and I needed to work with my people differently. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's something that I don't like, I see it in organizations, but like uh, it's almost, it's, it's that personal choice to take a different perspective or to say like, Oh, I need to do this. A lot of people just kind of stick to what they know and like stick to their identity in a sense. I'm this type of manager. This is what I do. Uh, to take a step back um, and to almost question your, um, you know, way of thinking about certain approaches um, is it requires awareness, requires that kind of, you know, a lot of times what we describe is uh, awareness and conscious development. Uh, could you maybe talk about that? Like, how do you uh, develop as a person in a sense, or how do you develop as in as a conscious, or maybe talk about conscious integral leadership, um, but starting with the mindset. And, you know, if we look at the research over the years, I don't know if you agree or not, but like it all points to leadership and leadership mindset and, you know, how, uh, how leaders, especially executives and organization, think about these things and how they behave? Yeah, so that's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> simple, yeah. simple question is, is how, how do, as leaders, how do we um, help shift perspectives and help develop our um, own in te 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 you know, in in internal operating systems to see things yeah. differently? Yeah. So you said something early on that really clicked, which is um, when I was describing, you know, answering your question about what was the shift for me, what happened, how did I know that? And that was aware that required awareness on my part, right? So mm -hmm. this is a known thing. This is nothing new and revelating, which is awareness is always the first step in, in being able to change anything. So what gets us to awareness? And so everyone's different. Everyone develops different places, different times. Um, some people are more aware very early. I mean, you can, you can watch a little baby's little children. I'm, I'm watching my granddaughter right now. And I love talking about her, of course. Um, I'm watching her and I'm noticing how aware she is as a little child. And she's, you know, and maybe I'm noticing more about little children because this is a grandchild and, and not a child. And so I'm in a different place in my own thinking with it. Yeah. Um, and so my awareness is really heightened right now with her. And I can see her. She knows she's learning like what I respond to, what people respond to her. And she's aware she's in this constant state. So that's a very interesting thing that you just made me think about. So being a parent and, you know, my wife and I are joking about how stressed we were, you know, with the first kid. And uh, when you're stressed, it's it's very difficult to be aware. So like now being a grandma, do you think like what kind of, a, uh, what's the relationship between being very stressed and being aware and now, you know, being uh, a grandma and just enjoying the moment. And, you know, I'm assuming you have less stress than your, your daughter or your son. Yeah. Uh, so first, first, let's get something straight. We don't you, we don't say grandma. Grandma, oh, sorry. <laughs> we, say, we say Mimi. Mimi, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is a word there, right? The sound is old. I don't have the gray bun or anything like my grandmother had. Um, but yeah, of course, you know, I'm not in that. It's She's not, I'm not raising her, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I'm not in the heat experience of that. Um, and so there is a different, I, I, I don't have something to prove. I don't have, you know, I, I'm not, it's, it's a different way of, of approaching it. So of course mm -hmm. I can see things from a different lens. Um, but going back to your other question, like how do how do we get there? So a lot of times it it comes awareness comes from what I said. I got into a situation where it it was a, a center for creative leadership calls it a heat perspective. Mm -hmm. So it's like a heat a heat is underneath you, a fire, you know, burning. Uh, people call it a burning challenge, but there's some fire underneath you. So I got you know we acquired this company. 
and fun fact, I used to work for that company acquired, we acquired before. So I had some experience and knowledge of them. I kind of knew what we were up against coming in, but all of a sudden I'm in a different role in trying to make this, that, this acquisition work. So I felt when I felt that heat or being in over my head, um, then I, um, then I had this new awareness. So think about, um, then you, you know, talking about consciousness. So you asked, let's talk about conscious integral leadership. What is that? So what is consciousness? I mean, cause we're conscious, we're, we're awake, we're alive, right? We're mm -hmm. conscious. Um, we're aware, we're aware that we're alive. So awareness and consciousness. And I think people, you know, think about these two terms and, and maybe, when they hear the word consciously, you know, our consciousness yeah. is like this, you know, I don't know, fluffy thing or thing that they can't grasp. And it's not some weird, you know, weird experience or anything like that. It's, it's just the state that we're in. So to give an example, uh, we just had a snowstorm, an ice storm here. Uh, and you're, uh, you're up there in uh, Connecticut, <laughs> I guess, so you may have gotten the same storm because I think it traveled that way. Exactly. So yeah, so last night I had actually I found yesterday afternoon, I found myself needing to go out and drive in that. And <sighs> well, even though they said stay off the roads, well, Michelle's going to get on the road because she's got something she's got to go do for somebody. And it's across the it's, it's across the uh, highway I have to go on the highway 30 minutes away. And so I was in a completely different awareness and consciousness than I would normally be had I not been in a snowstorm or an ice storm. When I was driving, I was all hands on deck. Both hands were on the wheel. I was aware of everybody around me, you know, what was happening. I, I didn't want the radio on, like everything was just, and that is what, I'm in a different element here. I'm in snow and ice. Mm -hmm. I can't be on autopilot. Mm -hmm. And that's really what this is about. I can get into this conscious awareness state where I'm no longer on autopilot. Like you and I can drive on autopilot mm -hmm. and I can, especially cause I'm a Mimi and I've been, <laughs> driving, I've been driving for a long time. Um, so we can drive on autopilot. Can a 15 or a 16 year old drive on autopilot? Mm. Not. <laughs> you know, and if they do, they're gonna find themselves in a heap of trouble the second some complexity hits the road. And so that's what this is about. You know, we're on autopilot. All of a sudden, we've got new complexity and acquisition, different cultures. We're taking our, our clients out of service. We didn't understand, you know, the, 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 the background of that company. We didn't understand the pipes that were there and what we bought or anything. Like so much I can talk about and that complexity I found myself in. Mm -hmm. And mostly all these new human beings are involved and I don't know how anybody is going to respond to something mm -hmm. I might do. So it's that heat experience that I found myself in and that leaders find themselves in that all of a sudden they go, okay, uh, I need to, I, I'm in over my head right now and I, I don't understand the context. I can't mm -hmm. just predict the plan and here's the solution. It's, it's far more different. And so um, it disrupts their habit. That's the, the autopilot. Something disrupts your autopilot. Mm -hmm. you know, oh boy now what and that's exactly that. it's almost like how uh covid disrupted you know many people's pilot uh, in a sense in a sense like you know and uh you know it's almost like a lot of companies are finding themselves in that situation where what do we do now um yeah dealing yeah. with complexity like you know in in your book and in, in part of the integral uh, agile transformation are the levels of consciousness, right? So uh, generally speaking, uh, the more aware you are and the more that you being, uh, um, uh, the more that you able to deal with the uh, complexity, the better solutions that you can come up with your teams, right? There's a tight correlation between your, um, uh, uh, let's just say mindset and how you deal with the, uh, with uh, with uh, challenges, um, 
what do you think from a perspective of today's leaders? And, uh, you know, we talk, you talk about the autopilot um, and now like where there's a lot of complexity, it's almost like all of a sudden everybody's swirling on the road. The conditions are constantly changing. Um, those leaders that are used to nice, sunny um, weather now are dealing with constantly and rapid changes in the environment. How, you know, what are, besides those challenges, how do you help leaders in a sense deal with that? Because uh, that requires, I'm assuming, coaching, but a lot of other things to help them yeah. deal with that turbulent. Yeah, so that's a really, you know, that's a really important question that we need to be asking ourselves as change agents, um, whatever mm -hmm. we call ourselves. Um, so there's this notion, we talk about it in the book and um, talk about horizontal development and vertical development. And that's what we're speaking about, isn't it? even as we've been talking about the mm -hmm. you know, perspectives, which is, you know, the what, the, the thing that's, that's, that's there that's initiating this like wake up call. Um, mm -hmm. And so going to some training for two hours as a leader or doing, you know, some horizontal development, which is... You know, horizontal development is just really building more competency, more skills, more knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that's one place where organizations are lacking in my experience and still work. I, I still work with organizations in, in addition to working with coaches and um, enterprise coaches, but um, yeah. that there's still not an awareness. I mean, even sometimes coaches come into my, my cohort program and aren't even familiar with the terms horizontal development and vertical mm -hmm. development and that there is a difference. Um, in the way to think about horizontal, besides it's competency, it's more your outer game. So mm -hmm. the leadership circle talks about the inner game and the outer game. And so does you know, most, of the, most of the leadership companies out there. But the vertical development is more about your inner game. And that's building your thinking capability, your you know, recognizing your limiting beliefs, Mm -hmm. Noticing your assumptions, you know, being able to take different perspectives because you're working on that inner game. Um, so, so horiz horizontal development can happen more quickly. And it's, you know, I can go, I can learn something, I can build skill, mm -hmm. but vertical development is more longer term. And it does have to do with, you know, with stage development as well. And it's harder to, to measure, right, too, because and also in organizations, we're incentivized, go take this class, learn about Scrum, learn about leadership, learn, do this. All of that is mostly horizontal development because it's developing those skills, you know, but like uh, being able to uh, truly take a perspective of somebody that you disagree with and understand their perspective and be able to see things through their um, eyes and through all senses and come up with a solution that works for everybody, not necessarily come up, but co-create a solution that uh, works for everybody is a lot harder. But um, when and we look at why, it, it's, yeah. That's why it's evolution, it's development. It's um, yeah. in, in, in the integral coaching uh, method that uh, I'm trained in, in, in work in. Um, we talk about this time where I'm, you know, working with my client. I'm coaching my client, and you know, we're using an integral way of, of doing this that mm -hmm. speaks to you know their own structures and, and and systems, and and you know they're all using all four quadrants. Um, but we talk about this developmental cycle. So much like we would experience um, going to the gym, I, I say this to everybody who's really trying to grasp what this means. Uh -huh get a trainer, right? We can say, oh, you know, I'm going to get in shape and everybody's doing this probably right about now in the new year. Uh, we're, we're at January 17th. So, you know, I'm kind of wondering <laughs> how people are doing with those new year's resolutions. <laughs> There's still a little hope till the end of January. And then you realize, you know, it's like, <laughs> Maybe. Um, but you know, you, you get a trainer, you go, you meet with your trainer and they give you some exercises to do. All right, I want you to go away. Here's your set. You know, put it on paper for you. Go, you know, and go do these sets. And then you're going to meet with him back in a week or two weeks, whatever it is. If you go back and you haven't done any of those exercises, guess what? You haven't developed any new muscle. Mm -hmm. And this is the same thing with vertical development. It's about it's about developing new capability. It's 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 the inner capability. It's the ability to think differently. Um, 
And so you've got to have, you've got to exercise that. You've got to, you know, there, there are lines of development we're talking about in this and like, what do I need to develop? What am I trying to do and where am I falling short? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it could be my systems thinking capability. It could be yeah. my ability to just be in, in collaboration with somebody. Uh, to or resonate. emotional, emotional kind of uh, uh, intelligence or in a sense, like I remember I, I talk about this in a sense that uh, I thought I wanted feedback. I asked for feedback. And then I'm judging that feedback, I'm reacting to it and not really looking at the feedback. It's just somebody else's perspective and somebody else's. And there is some truth in it and there's some, but just even willingness, I guess the first step is the willingness to, to, to start uh, accepting some of that feedback and then going through the process of realizing uh, how do I react to that feedback? So a lot of times leaders are, uh, first of all, they don't want the feedback. So maybe just getting them to start thinking about wanting feedback and then internalizing. Yeah. So what are some of the things that you do? You know, there are a lot of leaders out there that they think, you know, this is what's worked for me. This is who I am. I think the other big piece is like letting go of your identity. Like uh, this is who I am and I'm not changing. Right? Yeah, so... Yeah, so um, lots, lots of places to go here. Um, letting go of our identity. Um, first, we have to notice what our identity is tied to. <laughs> yeah. Again, the awareness first. What is my identity to, tied to? And so you gave the story of like sometimes you get feedback, and the first thing you want to do is like, but, but defensive, right? So, <laughs> exactly. Oh, let me recognize in myself first. So, in you know, if, if coaches are listening to this. We first have to notice ourselves because our way of being with our client. So if we're trying to expose them to new thinking, so they get that heat experience, they feel in over their head and um, the way we can enable them that, you know, that them to move into something different is to say, uh, to expose them to some different worldviews. However, if our worldview or our place of development is here and they're already there, how do we expect to take them here if we haven't gone there, right? So exactly. if I'm getting feedback as a coach or as you know a person of change agent, um, if, I, if, I, if I don't have the ability to, to recognize um, myself in the moment of receiving the feedback, like mm -hmm. objectively, <laughs> oh, look at Michelle. Michelle is resisting this feedback right now. What is this about? Okay, I can acknowledge I'm res resisting feedback. What is this about? What's happening for me in here? It's a fear, right? Our identity is tied to a fear, a belief mm -hmm. of I'm worthy if I can do this or if I'm seen as this, which is tied to in the book we call, you know, socialized mind. Mm -hmm. My belief system, my self identity, if it's tied to what I believe others want for me, expect of me, think of me, um, then I can't, I actually can't operate from my own self authoring mind because my belief is too closely identified with that. Correct. So I it's have, almost like going back to your book and the framework. It's like if I'm uh, in, re in that reactive state or even creative state it's hard to talk to somebody and, and get him to that integral or you know it, it, it's you have to <laughs> be able I, I i i talk about it in a sense of like operating systems like if i've upgraded to that it's easy to downgrade but if i'm never upgraded to that operating system it's very difficult to quickly upgrade so having an i having a uh ability as a leader to meet people where they are and like if I and this is very important for coaches you know uh, at least from my perspective like understanding what is that uh, perspective that the client is taking and being able to uh, uh, talk in a language um, that's familiar with them from that perspective rather than and this is where agile coaches we start talking about agile and this and all that and the leader you know uh, th th that's you know in that orange reactive is all 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 they care about is is results or whatever it is so it's easy for them just to say go away you're too theoretical you know or you're, you're not talking my language yeah. how uh 
maybe this is where a lot of organizations, this is why a lot of coaches work. What are some of the things that you've seen work when it comes to uh, working with very egocentric, the reactive leaders? Uh, what's the best way to help them see things from a different perspective and grow vertically? Yeah. So first I have to see the perspective with which they're seeing it from. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, so that requires me to be to have to be able to look as rather than at, mm-hmm. uh, and to let go of any attachment to anything I want for you know what I think they need to do or where they need to go or the organization needs to do. I have to suspend that. So mm-hmm. that's why it first has to start with up. Can I suspend that? Am I so tied? Is my identity <laughs> so tied? To- this outcome I want for this person because he or she needs to be able to do this. They and that need- goes back to awareness. Like I have to be aware that I'm actually doing that and not <laughs> catch <you> my. <laughs> Keep going on that, but yeah. that's exactly how it starts. So if first they get the heat experience, that's the, you know, that's the what that starts happening, kind of initiate yeah. that place. And then the second thing is they have to be exposed to some new a uh, way of thinking uh, through mm-hmm. training, through coaching, through something. And then, you know, so that's kind of the, the who, you know, who comes along. And so if I come along as a coach, I'm exposing them to a different mental model. And we do that in agile all the time. We expose people to, to our agile ways of working. Um, and then there's, there's more though, there's the next step. And so noticing where they are, noticing where I am and helping them to make sense. This is where integral, you know, sense making comes in, right? Mm-hmm. And my ability to help them make sense of of their situation, um, and bring a different perspective from a more elevated sense making place. Now, if I can't go there, I can't do it. Yeah. So it's almost maybe for people that are not as familiar with. Uh with what we're talking about as far as uh, sense making. And uh, a lot of people are familiar with Canavan. So like, it's almost understanding like which domain you're in and your approach is going to be different based on the domain. So this is similar. We're just talking about, uh, <laughs> uh, I guess, domains when it comes to mindset, uh, which domain or uh, perspective you're taking, right? Would you, would you say it's similar? Yeah. It's not exactly the same, but it's a sense making tool similar yeah. to Canavan, right? Yeah, I mean, it, we can, we can, you know, everything goes through our own sense making lens, our own meaning mm-hmm. making lens. And so, for me to meet, as you pointed out earlier, meet people where they are, it's trying to understand how they're making sense of it, mm-hmm. and um, meeting them in that sense making place. Mm-hmm. And so, um, complexity, of, of course, is there for all leaders. Yeah. that we're working with and it's the complexity therein that's important it's it, and so and when we begin to work with more uh higher level leaders mm-hmm. and that's where we also can get caught if we can't go there if we're still here if we can't be more strategic if we can't if we can't enter into that world then our um, ability to help them make sense of their own situations is very limited mm-hmm. It, 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 it's tough. So like, uh, you know, the challenges, at least that, you know, uh, I see is that we have organizations that are dealing with more and more complexity, yet leaders um, are not vertically developed, I guess, enough to deal with the complexity. So we see a lot of agile, you know, uh, I don't know what your experience has been, but like, I would say close to 100% of agile transformations that have been, have not been success to what people expect. Uh, They're better probably than where they were, but like, you know, there's a lot of BS around what, what is successful and what is not. And a lot of that ties back to lack of executive leadership. And the ones that have been part of that were more successful is really when the board and the like C-suite is operating from a, uh, from a, let's just say, higher vertical <laughs> uh, development perspective than, uh, yeah. 
and and imagine that because that's you know more fit for they're, they're more fit for the role they're in they're the role yeah. they're playing in the organization at that time so um you know you, you said a lot there and um I agree. I think so. We've had the same three top three reasons for year after year of why exactly. you know, magic <laughs> yeah. are not successful. Um, what are we measuring success by? We can that's another whole conversation, but in general, that's what the you know what the, the surveys show. And it's the same top three reasons, and the leadership is one of them. And yet we keep on doing the same thing over and over again. We keep on, you know, more training programs. If only the leaders would take this training, that's not gonna cut it. They've, they've got to be a part of this transformation. They've got to, they've got to, first of all, make some connections between what they're trying to do and their own leadership. And yeah. so, uh, you know, I lead an enterprise cohort, um, IC Agile um, certification for in the expert uh, place. And um, we have one of the competencies that's in that program is developing leadership in organizations. Now that means horizontal and vertical. Mm -hmm. Horizontal, it's 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 easier for us, and, we, and we've we've attacked that. If you if you know the integral framework, you know people have, have read the book, the books in our book and Ken Wilber and, and all the books out there. That is many many books. Um, you know um, we are we are very aware that we spend all of our time over here on the right side in like frameworks, the lower right with the scaled frameworks. And we, we've done that. We talk yeah. about values and principles, but nobody embraces those, right? Yeah. So here's the thing. So so then you have like, I just had a leader call me up and say, we'd like to bring you in. We've been doing the doing part of Agile and you, you know, everyone's heard this. Uh, and now we need to do the being in, 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 because the problem is the doing isn't how it's supposed to be done. <laughs> <laughs> And we're not getting the benefit of it because you can't extract them. You know, you can't mm -hmm. separate them. The mm -hmm. doing and the being come together. And so if you do it from the intentions, you know, at the, at the, at the let's just use the colors. Uh, yeah. and so if, if you do a green practice, which agile is, is a green practice. So if you do that from an amber or an orange place, you know, inner in, intention, um, it's going to come out exactly like that yeah you know? you're coercing and a good example would be like where you coerce people into doing agile where it's just for the sake of doing agile rather than you know co-creating something with them that's more context specific right so so we have to do this vertical work with leaders where we say you know this is a longer term so part of the problem with vertical leadership development in agile transformations let's set that as the context is first of all the connection hasn't been made for many organizations. They, mm -hmm. they, uh, they don't like even enterprise coaches that come into my program are like, well, we're having a hard time with this competency because, you know, ver leadership development is an HR or a, a <laughs> you know, a, a different department's job, and they are questioning like, why are you involved in this? You're you're doing the agile transformation. That's over there in IT. Why are you getting, you know, stepping in our sandbox, um, you know, and then there's there's this need to, you know, cross boundaries, do some boundary spanning and, and work with HR or whatever area does that, but the connection aren't being made. So we make all these, you know, grand statements about leadership and, oh, you know, agile leadership is servant leadership. That's been going on since the day I entered agile. Agile leadership is servant leadership. Well, if you look at stages of development in, you know, in leadership, servant leadership is way the heck up there. Yeah. And most of leaders, most people in leadership positions, management, even if you want to take the word leader and make it into a manager position, which is where the thinking is, um, most of them are in expert or achiever orientation. Mm -hmm. you know, they've gotten they've gotten promoted. Uh, from their because of their expertise to the now Peter, the Peter principle, right? Exactly. So, so, but we say, okay, so now you have to be a servant leader. Most of them are like, I don't know what the heck that is. Uh, <laughs> through you, you know, this is the way I've always done things, always worked for me. So, this is the way I'm going to do it. Hmm. And, you know, we just throw out all these words and terms. Um, and don't realize that the work is really over here in the developmental and evolutionary piece of it. 
Um, so how do you do that? I, I completely agree. So, and, and, you know, for a lot of coaches and consultants, it's like, how do I work with these people without imposing, right, uh, my own views or forcing them to, to change and say you have to vertically develop? What are some of the yeah. things or maybe uh, things that you would do when you obviously you have to have access to these people, but... Uh, right. Got to get a seat at the table, of course. Yeah. Um, and getting a seat at the table has a lot to do with you. And <laughs> instrument of change, yeah. right? Um, and so there's no right one right or wrong way. Of course, I'm just going to throw some some thing or two out here. Um, but if I take anything, so I go in and someone says, here's my situation. I just begin to look at it, first of all. You, you know this. So you, you look at it. And what I find out is we're not all on the same page for the most part. Mm -hmm. I mean, first and foremost, we're not even on the same page. There's so many assumptions being made um, and we're never, you know, we're not checking those. We're just all marching to the drum of our own, <laughs> the beat of our own drum. And mm -hmm. uh, well, I got my agenda and you got yours. I can do the same thing as an agile coach. I shouldn't, but I could, and many do. So if I just go in and I understand their problem context, it's, it's, it's not simple, but we don't have to make it hard. Yeah. So if I, if I find out what matters to people or what they're up to, what they're doing, what their mm -hmm. challenge is, then I can look at it from an integral lens, from the quadrant orientations where, you know, where, there's, where their focus is, because we all have our orientation Mm -hmm. where their, you know, where their level of development is as, as an organization or a department or an area within as a leadership team, if I'm looking at a leadership team. And, you know, basically, where do they stand on the current challenge they're bringing to me? So let me give you an example. One of the leaders recently came and said, you know, and actually the coaches were on the call, we've got mm -hmm. a backlog. Um, and, and here's what we've identified, um, and the senior leadership identified that we need to empower more decision-making because, uh, we're, we're struggling as an organization to move fast enough to meet the demands because there's some inability in an organization to make good decisions and make them fast enough. So maybe so just to, to, to connect to, to the framework, to, to the agile, just integral agile transformation, this is a, a leader coming up with realization, we need to change a policy, which is bottom right organizational architecture to align more decision-making. So I want to come back to this, but that's kind of, you know, if we look at the framework, that's kind of what's going on, right? Yeah, yeah well, it is. And you can look at it from any of the, of the four quadrants. So mm -hmm. empowered decision-making, well, that, you know, you go over the left side and that's a cultural thing as well. Mm -hmm. um, and decision-making itself is a thing I do. It's an action. Practice, I do. exactly. Decision, right? Yeah. And I go, I do that decision-making from my own mental model, upper left. Mm -hmm. So I'm all over the place with this one thing, like empowering decision-making. So if you see an organization and you're, you've been working with them and they seem stuck, what are they stuck on? Okay, mm -hmm. well, we said everyone's empowered to make decisions. Why aren't people making decisions? Well, let's take a tour of the quadrants and let's start discovering that. What's your culture like? You know, you can't all of a sudden make a claim, put it in an email and send it out to the whole organization and say, you're not all empowered. <laughs> what's, what's everybody going to do? What? Really? Oh my God, what does that mean? And then everybody's like Shh, talking on the side. You know? All of a sudden I'm empowered to make decisions. What does that even mean? I don't know. There's no guidance. So, so there's no guidance all around. All, we can go all through the four quadrants of what does guidance even look like? You know, what are my boundaries? What am I making the decision based on? Based on what? Hmm. What if I make a wrong decision? What's going to happen to me? So all my, my mm -hmm. own belief systems are now kicking in. Like I'm afraid, you know, my own reactivity is kicking. I'm afraid you told me I need to do this. And this is what we're all going to be measured on. I don't know what that means either. So no, you're either, people are either, okay, fine. And they just make an any decision or they're stuck and they're not making any because they're afraid. 
Mm -hmm. So uh, something that I've been wondering, thinking about, and I have my own kind of thoughts on it, but interest to hear yours. So we talk about like, you know, in a sense, do we start with the mindset top left? Do we, you know, unless there's this idea of change the structure, ch structure will change the culture. Uh, with the example that you just gave, in a sense, it was a decision, personal decision to, in a sense, decentralize decision making. That comes usually from a more, it once you develop through uh, vertically, that comes more from a creative or integral that, hey, you know, I, it's not about me. Uh, it's more about others, right? So there's that growth from that perspective. That growth uh, now starts aligning with the type of organizational architecture that you would see what you call post-modern uh, or maybe uh, metamorn. So it, does the, from your perspective, does it really come the change in mindset requires the change in the system or does the, because here's the thing, right? I, 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 I've been thinking about COVID and uh, the changes ch system actually changed the <laughs> how we think about and what we see. So, what is from your perspective? What, it's all interconnected. It is, all, it's yeah. all interconnected. But it what is. is your thought on that? Like, is there the you know one that influences more than other, um, even though the interconnectivity is there? So, well, there's we can think about this from different whole on levels. Like, if I'm just thinking about this as an individual, for instance. Yeah. Um, what what I know that takes that takes place in me as a person, as a human being, is something happens, like I talked about earlier, a heat experience. I I feel something happens in my life, mm -hmm. and there's the happening, and then the the way that I can shift is working with my belief system. Mm -hmm. So can I say that in can I make a blanket statement that you should start with the belief systems first? No. Yeah. <laughs> Just you, I mean, yes and no. Yeah. <laughs> yes and no. They're all co-arising together. That's why you can't take apart the doing and the being yeah. of anything. And so, so it goes back to that sense making, like, you know, when I work as a coach, I'm always looking at those four and I'm always looking at, you know, I might look at individual team or, you know, organization and you're always contextualizing based on what you're, you know, uh, seeing, you're always uh, balancing all of those, right? Yeah. And you're noticing what's present. And so one way we've talked about the inner role, uh, agile framework is it's a, it's a meta framework uh, for mm -hmm. one, and it's a way to see more clearly so that you can act more effectively. Mm -hmm. And so where's some leverage? What, what leverage do I have right now? So as you pointed out, you know, the system can create some thinking mm -hmm. and the thinking creates the systems. The culture creates, you know, transformation of, of, of systems requires transformation of culture. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I use an example of, of one client where you know, they read uh, Frederick Laloux's Reinventing Organizations. And I think I maybe tell the story in the book and um, man, this sounds great. This is exactly what we need because they had just gone through a heat experience and they'd had some big challenges in the organization. Right. And this is what we need. We need this kind of structure. So they looked at the structure, the lower mm -hmm. right, and said, we need this. So then they went about making a change but the way they went about the change in general, their, their unconscious approach to change, their autopilot way of going about changing the structure created an, another whole situation where the morale ended up going, you know, mm -hmm. the culture aspect kicked in. Well, you can't just change the structure without working with the culture because the culture was like, well, wait a minute, I no longer have direct reports. Have I been demoted? You know, mm -hmm. or wait a minute, like, I don't understand why you're changing the structure. You didn't explain this to me. You know, so so everything came out. Yeah. Or if the culture used to be that, you know, it, your uh, status is determined by how many people you have reporting to you, all of a sudden you're <laughs> threatening that's, that's my... That's exactly what happened. You're, you're yeah. exactly right. That is exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. So so you can't say, well, I can start with belief and mindset, and that's always the place to start. Mm -hmm. Well, I, So I may, maybe, uh, you know, uh, to look at, you know, uh, integral coaches, your, your, your integral coach, like when you think about agile coaching and, you know, things that you uh, teach in your um, 
Enterprise Agile Coach Masterclass. Sorry, is that what it's called? Um, yeah, it's called um, it's called the Enterprise Coaching um, Master Program. ECM. Master Program. Yeah. So, what are some of the key, uh, things in that program that are uh, that you cover? Maybe just give us an overview that I feel is the the, the you know gonna it helps people be more of a holistic integral coach to be able to be a better sense maker to be able yeah. to be more effective with others. Well, one thing I want to say before I jump into that is that as you're doing this, as you're noticing what's present in there and you're just looking at and looking at as your client, when noticing where they are, um, mm -hmm. you're, you begin to notice what's based on what they want to do. So in an interval coaching method that I use, mm -hmm. if a client comes to me, I'm asking them what their topic is, what their goal is. Mm -hmm. So in, you know, in respect to the topic or the goal that they have, or I, you know, I want to be a more present coach, or I want, you know, I want to, whatever it is that they want to do, then the capability that they need to develop is based on that. So, so I don't, that's a really good, I, 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 yeah. Cause like, this is where coaching, like if somebody says, I want to be a more directive coach or leader, I want to make more money. A lot of coaches would judge that and say like, you know, that's not the right way. And I think what you're describing, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that you have to meet them where they are there and help them do that. It's not necessarily where it's your agenda to make them more vertically developed or whatever it is, right? Well, it's not, that's one, that's one thing about it. And the other thing yeah. is they don't necessarily need to develop all the capability in life that they don't have. It's right. what people, so as an organization, based on where they want to go, what they want to achieve. That's why just saying, oh, we're doing an agile transformation for what, for why, what, what's your pain? You know, where are you now? Like, why do you want to do this? So when I can see where they want to go, then my plan with them, my co-creation of a plan is about what capability do they lack in that they need to develop because they could be strong over here. And that speaks, you know, in the, in the method speaks to the lines that yeah. some are more developed than others. But you want to develop the ones that are going to help them get to <laughs> yeah. not the ones that are lowest, the ones that you need to uh, yeah. to address to help you with that. Yeah. Um, exactly. So, what are some of those lines? What are some of the things maybe that in general, uh, you know, coaches? Is it just more like you have to? It almost comes back to, and I don't know if you do leadership circle assessment or some type of assessment as a coach. Understanding it's almost like what type of uh, challenges are you facing with similar like leaders and what lines do you need to develop so you might have let's just say 15 people in your class each person is going to have a different exactly right yeah person's going to come up with their own goal developmental topic based on you know the feedback and also what they already know about themselves generally mm -hmm. you know so the feedback is just kind of um, and sometimes people don't know that about themselves and that feedback is there to bring more awareness to it so all right um, and we didn't we didn't mention this transcend and include piece of interval, which is um, everyone thinks of just transcend, just you know, move to the next <laughs> level. Move to a higher plateau, man. I'm not there, right? I'm there. Yeah. Um, transcend and include. It stands for transcend the limitations. That's what you're transcending. Mm -hmm. you're not transcending all of you. You're not saying I want to get rid of me and I need to know, you know, so we do this current way of being a new way of being in this interval coaching method. Mm -hmm. My current way of being, I have a lot of beautifulness about me. Michelle, mm -hmm. you know, who is she? She's got a lot of great stuff about her and she's got some limitations. Mm -hmm. So based on where I want to go, what I'm trying to do with my life or, you know, with myself and my goal, what more capability do I need to develop and what limitation am I transcending? Exactly. That's, that's another thing where like limitation could now be something that was a strength before and just realizing that a, you know, uh, uh, something that I consider and that's worked, for, that's worked for me as a leader for a long time or a coach in yeah. this context, it's actually, I need to transcend that in order to be better leader or better coach in this environment. So you're transcending the limitations, but you're taking with you what's valuable, what's what you you want to take, what's mm -hmm. useful, what's helping you, what serves you. 
Um, and organizations, the same thing. We're not saying get rid of who you are in an organization because they've actually accomplished quite a bit if they're still around. Like, so, you know, what do you want to take with you? And, and appreciative inquiry does a, a lot in this area, you know, where it's about the appreciative inquiry is what, what have we done that's worked? What do we want to keep? But what's not working? What do we want to leave behind? And so that's always the invitation is to look at that. And so in the cohort, um, they're coming up with every, every individual comes up with their own developmental plan, right? Mm -hmm. Based on where they want to go with their life and what capability they want to develop. And then there's the competencies that we've said, if you're an enterprise level, if you're working across an enterprise in a true agile transformation, mm -hmm. um, you know, what are the competencies that, that you need really to be able to do this work? And one of them, the one that I, I start with is developing self as leader, developing self as an instrument of change. That's, 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 the, that's the first one. Um, your coaching range is, is another competency. So your ability to um, expand your range as a coach, um, mm -hmm. you know, to work with more complexity, to work with different types of leaders at different levels of the organization, um, to have, you know, to have a professional coaching range ability, to have a, a better facilitation skills. So there's a lot mm -hmm. of skill and competency as well as you know, vertical development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then there's um, another competency that's super important is developing leadership in organizations, which is what we've been talking about mm -hmm. this most, most of this time. So you don't, if you haven't done it for yourself, you're not going to know how to do that. How mm -hmm. do I begin developing leadership in an organization? My gosh, that's such a hard thing to even think about. And it is the one I would say so, you know, so far, and I'm, I'm working on cohort number six now. Um, that's the one that I think most people struggle with. It's that one. And, and, mm -hmm. and which, you know, aligns with what we're, you know, seeing from these surveys that come out of why do our transformations failing. It aligns completely. What I'm seeing in the cohorts, the one that coaches are struggling the most with is that one, developing mm -hmm. leadership. Oh, that's not your job. Or, <laughs> oh, we don't have time for that. Right. Um, okay, we'll take a class, you know, no understanding that my capacity as a leader is tied to my results. Yeah. It's and it's, it's almost that remind me of, uh, you know, Keegan's kind of in over our heads, like most of the leaders are just in over their heads, when it comes to uh, that vertical development, and you know what they can deal with. And then the last thing that they think about <laughs> is, is that uh, inner development or developing that uh, um, ver vertically developing? Uh, there's many times for an achievement, right? Yeah. And most organizations are so achievement oriented. It's just go, 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 do, do, do. Well, our society. So this is another thing which I don't want to go down to, but uh, our society is very achievement oriented. So when you have policies, when you have markets that are all about numbers and uh, profits, then that's going to drive the type of behavior in organizations and incentivize those type of leaders yeah. to do that. So if we can help, you know, so that's the third one. And I'll just briefly name the other two, which is guiding uh, the change process and guiding organizational agility. And so one of those to guiding the change process really speaks to the organizational change, organizational behavior, mm -hmm. complexity piece of it. But um, yeah, the, the developing leadership in organizations is the toughest one for coaches. And so it's the place where we've got to get creative. It's the place mm -hmm. where, you know, sometimes it's a sneaky little thing you're doing, you know, <laughs> um, they don't always uh, even recognize I'm doing it sometimes. Um, but how can I make, you know, have different conversations? I mean, that's where it begins. It's, it's bringing awareness, shining a light on their belief system right now and, and how that's impacting the results we're getting. And so how do I begin to do that and have different conversations around it is, is really the first step. Great. Um, we're almost out of time and I know you have a hard stop. Um, what would be maybe a question that I didn't ask or a message that you would like to share? Uh, what would you like uh, to leave us with? Yeah, I guess maybe what I was just saying, um, no, there's a lot of things maybe I would want. I, I feel like we could have this conversation for a lot longer than one hour. And uh... yeah, yeah, and I'm sorry, I have a hard stop. But um, 
honestly, it's just notice where you are. If, if you're a coach listening to this or um, a ch- you know, person involved in the change in, in your organization, just notice, notice where you are first. Um, notice your own like below the line experience with your client. Um, and you know, maybe you feel like worn out. <laughs> maybe you feel like there's no point to this. Um, and just notice where you are, notice what you're attached to and notice what you're taking on, you know, as if it's yours to take on, if, as if it's yours to solve, because it's not, no, no one person can, you know, can change an organization. It requires the organization to, to want to change. It requires the mindsets, the collective culture. And all we are, all we are doing is influencing we're there to influence. We're there to be that um, when they have that heat perspective and that, oh my God, I'm over my head. We're there to expose them to something new, a new way of thinking about something and meet them in their own perspective taking. And if we can change, you know, a, turn a light bulb on slowly um, through those conversations, we've done some good work. We've done some good work. <laughs>